welcome to our uh, conversation and uh, presentation about high flex and high engagement with uh, Enterprise uh, Cadley. It's uh, great to uh, have everyone uh, with us, and I hope you've been enjoying Blackboard World. Uh, the uh, conference, of course, is a great way for uh, teachers and uh, practitioners and, and, and techies to, to commingle and to share ideas. But for this presentation, I am really happy to share this kind of a find that's right for the times. Uh, and, and, and so I'm really happy about this presentation. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Simon Mahayevsky, and I am uh, an assistant director at the University of Illinois at Chicago for Innovation and Academic Tools. And uh, of course, uh, our Blackboard system um, is um, fairly mature. We've uh, ran it since about 1998. Uh, and um, you, know, you can check my data on Wikipedia, but uh, UIC happens to be the largest uh, medical school in the United States. And uh, we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, really outstanding researchers who do teaching uh, and um, in, in the fields that are primarily clinical in nature. Uh, we are, of course, uh, trying to find tools that will help to uh, advance learning. So uh, we uh, ran a pilot of Acadly, and Acadly is a software that uh, you can uh, you know, get to know by uh, maybe visiting their, uh, their page there. Uh, but we started the Acadly pilot in response to actually some of our instructors already using Acadly for years. So uh, instructors found Acadly on their own uh, because it, it is free to adopt. Uh, they were using it primarily for uh, monitoring and, and tracking attendance. So that was sort of the start of, uh, of, of the company. And, and they did attendance beautifully. And so that worked. Uh, and the reason why we were interested in the pilot is because uh, also they adopted Zoom. So now we had an application that not only did attendance, but also allowed the instructor to uh, create Zoom video lectures that could be consumed by students at home or in the classroom. And that, of course, is you know, one of the uh, main foundations for this high-flex approach where, hey, uh, you get to choose where you're going to be. Uh, one more thing that Academy does really well is, in addition to doing this synchronous uh, video for someone who's in the classroom, but then they're at home as well, uh, they also allow you to schedule activities that are pre-lecture and then post-lecture activities. And so that's the kind of asynchronous piece that completes the high flex idea. And uh, I also, of course, uh, included high engagement because uh, it is a mobile app and it allows you to have a lively conversation and a lively lecture while doing polling and uh, quizzing and everything else that you need in order to uh, provide some uh, uh, accountability uh, for for the engagement in the classroom. So I just want to, for a few seconds, show you how we've adopted that in our Blackboard uh, Learn system. So um, this is uh, a class in our Blackboard system, and so of course uh, we have uh, the uh, um, ultra navigation uh, with an original course, and so we have a link right here for uh, uh, for a Cadley, and then. Inside, that's where the activities take place. And I am looking through this uh, or through my web browser at Academy, but uh, the mobile app is sort of the, the main uh, uh, tool uh, in the classroom. And so inside of a class, notice that the lectures are scheduled. And so that's the really neat piece that bridges the needs for synchronous delivery. And that is students need to know when these lectures will be taking place. And so Sometimes that results in, in you know sophisticated methods of scheduling through Google Sheets or or otherwise. Uh, but you basically schedule uh, your your lectures, and then of course you use Zoom, which is something very familiar uh, to the masses, right? So not just to your instructors who have been using WebEx or um, I think we use uh, Teams and and collaborate and probably five others. But some that they use at home for attending, uh, you know, um, 
uh, weddings and funerals and and so zoom happens to be sort of a second nature for a lot of the new uh no not new but for a lot of faculty who are new to technology right and so uh, a very very nice uh, and and low learning curve and so throughout uh the academy class you're able to have activities such as discussions and polls and now if someone misses this interactive session so they were not able to do it at home and they were not able to attend the class they will be able to experience um, the the session by still doing all the pre-class activities and these could be quizzes that they can be um, uh, learning content items but then they can see what happened in class so they can see the polls and the results of the polls that uh, took place uh, they can look at the discussions that were happening during the recording of the Zoom lectures. So I can still now look at the recording and I can listen to all the activities, but then I can also participate in the activities that uh, were taking place. And then afterwards, we have a review summary of the class and then post-class uh, activities. So a really, really neat approach to the kind of unpredictable realities that we have today in, uh, in our industry. So just to, you know, um, uh, sort of rehash some of the details, uh, attendance, it's there. And it's, it's not just um, a regular way of approaching attendance. It's actually a fairly advanced way of um, making sure that the people who are pressing the yes, I'm here are actually people in your class and, and they are uh, where they where you expect them, whether at home or, or in the class. Uh, and then when it comes to polling, now there's actually a, a place um, on the website here where there's a detailed uh, comparison of uh, other polling systems because, you know, uh, Dr. Mazur uh, and his uh, research into clickers and, and uh, uh, peer instruction, that's, that's solid. And, and we've had tools to deal with this for a long time, ranging from poll everywhere to others. Uh, but uh, all those tools tend to, um, you know, find their silos. So for example, we have people that just love poll everywhere, people who love iClicker, and that is all great. Bottom line is by now, these are fairly simple tools. And so the fact that the polling is now inside of the Cadley and we are able to use the uh, very, very strong principles for retention uh, memorization that follow using clickers, uh, that is a really a big plus. So it's not just attendance, but it's also the, the peer instruction. Uh, the quizzing that's included, uh, you know, quick checks of information, but also then the idea that we are now integrated with Blackboard. And that, by the way, was one of um, our pilot uh, activities when we engage with a Catholic, and by the way, it's a great company to work with. Um, you know, they they work directly with faculty as well. So taking you know a really big burden from us uh, trying to maybe come up with uh, uh, resources, but uh, really great support both for our technical team and our faculty, and uh, and so they, they they were able to help us deploy uh, the solution and to 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 keep uh, the adoption. So what we committed to with Academy was helping them develop the enterprise integration. So what does that mean? Well, the synchronization of the membership in the class with what's in the Academy. Uh, the instructors who have used Academy for years at UIC, they had to share invitation links and more like sort of what Slack would do, right? So you send emails, you invite people, you try to get them in there. So the enterprise uh, integration just fills up the class with all the users and then they, they have access. Uh, also, uh, transfer of grades to the gradebook and of course the LTI presence. And so this kind of a single sign-on uh, approach there. Uh, so the idea that Academy really took uh, pedagogy and andragogy seriously when developing the tool, that, that was a pretty strong um, and, and an attractive uh, thing about them, right? So it's not just an, a clicker, it's not just a quizzing tool or an attendance tool, but sort of a holistic approach 
to the fact that, hey, if you're going to call it high flex, then it better include a number of things that uh, the instructors can, can deploy. And of course, going back to analytics, because uh, knowing what the students are doing is, uh, is, is a key part of uh, uh, our interactions. Uh, by the way, a quick plug, if you are interested in analytics inside of Blackboard, uh, we are now uh, starting a new uh, community group on the community system. And so I'm going to put a link for it right here, where you can um, uh, ask questions about Blackboard data. Uh, we also will be looking at a number of other data sources for analytics. Uh, because really analytics are important and uh, what we know about um, sort of the direction uh, of um, the world is that uh, we create data about our behaviors, about our activities, about uh, you know everything we do and then perhaps don't realize that that data might be used against us in the future. <laughs> and so you know we, see, we saw that with credit reports uh, uh, especially, you know, a number of years when they were, they were being developed and even uh, before some of the legislation took place that we have the right, you know, to look for free at these uh, reports. But today we realize that really faculty have to use the LMS tools and the, and the uh, um, technology uh, tools well, because if they do not, then the data that's generated by their students, data that will follow the students for years, is going to be flawed. And so some of the examples that we have seen, for example, is when uh, faculty schedule a due date and in, the, in the LMS, and then they accept assignments maybe through email or uh, even in, in, in person in, on paper. And then the LMS marks those submissions as late or non-existent. And so uh, that in the future can be seen at a very narrow lens as the student is somehow flawed academically and, and you know their capacity is not there uh, so uh, big responsibility for faculty to to use um, tools well but then also to always have analytics in mind because uh, the analytics tools are going to continue to be part of our uh, conversations so I mentioned um, a moment ago uh, that uh, we uh, ran um, our pilot and so Certainly, the uh, pilot uh, that we uh, executed is something that uh, we definitely wanted to uh, shed some light on uh, during this uh, conference. Um, we certainly encourage for you to even ask right now how many of your faculty already are using a catalyst, and possibly you'll be surprised because this is a, a fairly uh, popular tool among faculty and oftentimes the administrative offices are, are not aware of it. But back in 2017, we had uh, um, you know a little bit of experience of, of adapting uh, a Cadley. And uh, where we see great benefit for these particular tools is in the large enrollment courses and courses that really require that we reach out to students and we produce some kind of a um, uh, engagement element often by considering uh, intrinsic motivation and so uh, this is just a, a snapshot of what was happening before our pilot we have instructors using the tool specifically for um, uh, tracking attendance now when we then um, considered that uh, hey uh, there is there is uh, opportunity here to uh, have a tool that um, is flexible enough and then covers uh, all these niche uh, ideas that uh, everybody is talking about, like HyFlex. Uh, and so we've considered the data that uh, Callie was sharing with us uh, about uh, uh, what it is that uh, has been taking place on our campus. And instead of just reading the slides to you, you can read it uh, you know, flexibly as a, as, as a story, and, and you can download it, these right from uh, the program. So by the time fall of 2019, our use of a Cadley was already taking uh, an increase without us actually, um, you know, having to, uh, to, to do much. So um, as the county here says, uh, this entire time, nobody from UIC ever spoke to anyone from a Cadley, not a single demo or support call. <laughs> And so that's that, that's important because you know that software has some legs, right? When it sort of grows on you, um, 
you know, we sometimes use the expression organically, but uh, it, it grows on you because people want to use it. And so in spring of 2020 is when we started our pilot. And uh, certainly this was the time uh, when a lot of things uh, were, were, were changing. Um, and one of the key elements that um, brought us to this kind of realization, you know, this is a free tool, but we want to pay for it, was that Zoom integration, right? And so the, the Zoom integration, and, and there are many other great video tools that have, you know, their place uh, in, in the toolkit. But again, Zoom is uh, very, very familiar to students. Zoom is very, very familiar to the instructors that have never used technology before. And because it is an application that runs natively on the operating system, that means that oftentimes lower end devices are able to, to fully support it. And so as part of um, uh, our, our pilot, uh, we surveyed uh, students uh, or, or instructors. And so um, the, the message was you know, quite clear to us that um, it, it is necessary to really model good behaviors in terms of um, uh, video tools. Uh, and so that is also, I think, why Zoom is, is such a great thing to continue to carry. Um, and uh, there are other startups across the world, of course, that are claiming to develop things for Zoom. Uh, but they do not have the experience and the longevity of uh, a Cadley uh, in how they understand professors and how, how they interact with, uh, uh, with the classroom. So this is sort of my favorite uh, you know, picture for this presentation because it does uh, show, um, it does show you know, the, the focus uh, where we have still this kind of eye contact with the instructor we have room for very specific uh, conversations and uh, content sharing. But then, right there, we also have the quizzing, we have the polling, and the entire experience of the student. And then we are able to reflect the grades from this experience inside of Blackboard. And so this sort of closes the loop for us that these niche pieces that were so difficult to tie together in the past, and there are multiple tools you know, only advanced uh, faculty who were very quick on their feet were able to accomplish that. Um, because once you get started on the lecture, all you operate really is, is the Zoom uh, buttons. Um, that is really where sort of the sweet spot uh, came for, uh, for the uh, project. And so uh, in this presentation later on, we have some results, you know, how happy we are with it. And so I uh, encourage you to take a look at it and take it back to your um, instructional design offices, but uh, the bottom line is that uh, it, it is a tool that really can fit the need. Again, I said it was right for the time uh, because of where we are, and uh, you know we all hope that the um, you know pandemic is going to uh, settle down. Uh, the bottom line is we don't know, uh, and so um, uh, UIC was uh, you know honored to receive the um, leading change uh, award, the Catalyst Award this year. Uh, partly because we are comfortable with this uncertainty, that we are prepared through the variety of tools, uh, but also we are uh, comfortable that uh, the tools that we have brought in uh, into our toolkit uh, are able to sustain further changes and further developments and perhaps you know we, we, we have uh, uh, no real idea on the uh, horizon that they, they are coming. So uh, at this point, uh, uh, I was just going to uh, maybe quickly reach out to um, uh, uh, my um, um, organizer here. If there was any questions that perhaps come up, or anything that uh, uh, perhaps we need to uh, uh, take a quick look at. Jeff, uh, was there anything that uh, maybe came up during during the session so far? No, no, haven't seen any questions yet, folks. If you want to type stuff in, feel free to. All right, no, that's 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 uh, great. So yeah, feel free to to uh, to pose questions. Uh, but uh, you know, taking the, uh, the the moment, maybe a little breather uh, in the chat. Um, go ahead and share perhaps the tools or approaches that you have taken to high flex. What uh, what have you uh, been able to 
uh, you know, adapt that, uh, you know, fits this kind of, uh, you know, niche of uh, at home, uh, in the classroom, and then um, asynchronous as well. Um, I just uh, briefly looked at uh, uh, our uh, attendees, and there's some uh, uh, heavy hitters from Blackbird community. So uh, l let us know, share what, what it is that you perhaps, you know, have seen, or as you listen to, you know, what this particular tool does, you know, what, what it is that um, uh, perhaps uh, you were able to uh, adapt on your own. Pretty quiet. Yep, that's. We have to be comfortable with uh, with silence. You know, that's uh, one of the principles in the classroom. If you um, if you ask a question, then don't uh, let silence do its work. So maybe that can even be extended to those um, peer instruction tools, right? So. Um, if there's peer instruction that peer instruction that you found that could be extended, right? Not just uh, in the classroom, but also. All right. So Thomas says uh, I recommend people back to the to the Blackboard tools. All right. So um, in so Blackboard um, uh, specifically, do you do you mean? Um, the uh, say Blackboard Collaborate, for example, is that is that what you mean? Oh, I see what you're saying. To stop mid lecture and go, yeah, yeah, and so that's a, that's a possibility where um, maybe you are um, streaming your lecture in some way, and again, there's plenty of tools that that can do that, and then um, uh, to go ahead and uh, uh, go to Blackboard maybe to update um, Q and A's. That's a way to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Always um, uh, pleasure to uh, talk so much so as to silence the room. <laughs> so, Simon, Steph, one of the, one of the things I was thinking about though, and I think maybe to Thomas's point, right? And and you brought it up as well in terms of you know collection of data and analytics. What does does Academy have anything on the in their plans in terms of of data sharing? So think think right think, you know we're all we're always looking at at standards and those kinds of things to collect that information in the, in a single data store. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good so it's it's a good thought that you know typically we we would maybe reach out to Blackboard Data to do some institutional reporting. Um, and, and frankly, you know, you look at Echo or, or other systems, they tend to um, hold on to their data, right? Uh, one of the things that we've uh, noticed was uh, with our adoption of EasySoft at the same time is that we are able to track the LTI launches. So when uh, Academy is accessed uh, through Blackboard, you know, some of that data would appear on, on the EasySoft uh, reports. Um, but specifically, when instructors um, look at the Cattle Analytics, uh, you know it can be exported into a portable um, file and then and then moved somewhere else. Um, but I think that is um, maybe a little bit of uh, what we find challenging uh, in the data ecosystem around Blackboard. That um, we, of course, uh, are happy that Blackboard Data includes Collaborate and it includes uh, Li and, and so multiple data sources of that family. Uh, but if we do have data from Academy, right, how can we then match it to the other uh, data stores? And, and I don't know that we have some great answers for it right now, other than uh, if your class is delivered through Academy, then between uh, the data inside of the grade center, so your last access dates to uh, the course, uh, and then of course the grades themselves. The analytics in Academy would inform you uh, also about the activities during lectures. And then the attendance itself that's taken can also be posted right into the gradebook. So you might have a non-graded or you know excluded column from grading 
but it would uh, track your uh, your attendance. So um, I think that's a that's a good challenge for uh, maybe future uh, collaborations with uh, the company to see if we can um, uh, take the uh, analytics data and uh, match it with uh, what's in Blackboard data. Uh, again, this kind of uh, interaction of data sources, I think that, that is sort of the current uh, challenge that uh, uh, we're trying to put together. And the user group that's uh, being formed in the community system uh, might be one way to do that. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm with you, Jeff, that it is certainly a, um, a challenge because if, even if a student is performing well inside of uh, Academy, perhaps there are some high stake exams that are inside of Blackboard and uh, you would want to see you know, all that activity in one um, to evaluate. You know, even something as silly as saying, hey, does this student deserve extra credit? And, and being able to see across multiple systems of their activity. Right, just even even to some extent, just busyness too. So I see you see Car Carlos is here on the stream. He's take taking note of this use case. So um, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad to see Carlos here. Excellent. Yeah, no, and I think that that is you know as a community, you know, we, we certainly are are um, taking data to another level. Uh, I mean, plenty of uh, systems today. Um, either make it extremely expensive to extract data or um, uh, right now impossible, right? So, um, of course, with Blackboard tools, um, we have nice uh, data sources where the data is being gathered across uh, multiple applications. Um, and with partners, you know, like EasySoft, there's some additional boost in uh, uh, being able to even deliver the data right into the instructor's uh, hands. Um, but uh, as we look at, you know, I'm, off the top of my head, I'm thinking like Echo 360 or some of the other systems. You know, there's plenty of data there, but it is certainly viewed as internal to the application. And if you know how to find it, you know, go go get it. But it's not part of uh, sort of a larger set of dashboards. Right, right. We, I think the, uh, you know, like the caliper standard. We, we've been. We've been encouraging, right? But people do recognize people definitely, or, or, or uh, other vendors out there, certainly recognize the value of that data, um, right? And and aren't aren't always as uh, um, uh, eager to to access or share that with others. So exactly. Now I see a couple of questions in the QA. The first one: uh, Can we take the grades out of a Cadley? So the grade synchronization is part of the enterprise license. So just like your course membership is populated by uh, Blackboard membership, and that's done through REST API, um, uh, the grades also for for the specific assignments, the pre lecture or post lecture, uh, for the specific assignments, that's also transferred into Blackboard. And uh, again, uh, the attendance, which some instructors make it uh, account for grades, some simply expect it uh, as, as part of being in class and maybe have more of a punitive approach where if you don't attend, you, you, you get kicked out. But all of that goes into the grade book. And then the question, um, would it use our existing Zoom licenses? Uh, yes, so we have uh, enterprise license for Zoom, but uh, as an instructor, you get to uh, schedule and, and configure the Zoom conference so you are able to use um, you know, the licenses that, that, that you select or the, 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 that you currently have. And um, it's, it's my understanding that, uh, again, in the Zoom EDU space, that there are other companies that are trying to innovate, but Academy does not require these additional uh, licenses for SDK to, to be owned by the, by the client. So there is actually a, an extreme where you can say, hey, um, I'm going to innovate for Zoom, but what you don't realize is that you will have to buy a set of new licenses uh, for, for Zoom. So that's, uh, that's something that, again, we appreciate about Academy is that the licenses that we already have uh, were applicable. Sorry, I'm having some grass activity outside. Uh, so uh, so we're, at, we're at end of time. I don't know if, it, if you want to wrap up with something, but... Uh... 
Yeah, hey, uh, thank you so I'll much. Thank everybody for joining too. <laughs> yes, and, and please uh, give a Cadley a try. Uh, again, I just started with a survey because you might already have a Cadley in your campus without even knowing it.